In this video, I'll be going over a few worked examples related to the learning outcome, show an understanding of the nature and properties of alpha, beta, and gamma radiations. These questions come from ACE Physics Syllabus Code 9702, paper 11 from May-June 2011. Questions 39 and 40. We'll start with question 39. It reads, Uranium-238, and then it gives us that nuclide symbol there for uranium-238 and shows us that there's 92 protons and 238 total nucleons, decays by alpha emission into a daughter product, which in turn decays by beta emission into a granddaughter product. What is the granddaughter product? <clears throat> well, if we're really familiar with these types of radiation, then we know that an alpha emission is going to decrease the proton number by two, right? There are two positive charges in that helium nucleus, and so that's going to bring that uranium down to 90, to thorium. But beta emission is going to increase the proton number, right? And because that's when we have a neutron turning into a proton. And so after this alpha emission, we'd be thorium, but after the beta emission, we would be protactinium. So the correct answer here is choice B. I'm going to write all that out down here. So we've got uranium-238 and then it's going to um, emit an alpha particle and so what must be left over well, this went down by four, and so it's this thorium-234, uh, right? Thorium has 90 protons. But then that thorium is going to emit a beta particle. Now, a beta particle is not a nucleon, okay? So it has no nucleon number. And its proton number, well, it's, it's an electron. So we can kind of think about it. It's, it's like its charge. It's negative one. Okay. And so we need to kind of make sure that this all, um, you know, remains balanced here. So how did we sort of achieve this? Well, one of these neutrons became a proton. Okay, and we can kind of think about, I've mentioned this before in the slides, that it's not the perfect way to think about it, but it's helpful for me at least to think about, well, if I have a, 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 new, you know, a, a particle that's neutral, and then you know, somehow we're ejecting out a negative charge from the uh, nucleus, and this is really all governed by the weak nuclear force is how we can kind of explain beta decay. We can explain this alpha decay with the strong nuclear force, but it takes you know, another you know, force of nature, the, the weak nuclear force, to explain this type of decay. Um, but, but back to the question at hand, if we are converting one of these neutrons into a proton, well, then this is going to go up, right? And so this is where we're going to get our protactinium. And again, the nucleon number isn't going to change, right? Because a beta particle is on a nucleon. And here we can see that 91 plus negative 1 is our 90. So the math really still checks out too. And so the correct answer here is um, choice B for question 39. We've kind of, I think touched on the answer to question 40 here, but let's go through it. It says, which statement about nuclei is correct? A, different isotopic nuclei have different proton numbers. Well, we know that's not correct, right? We've, we've been saying that we define the um, chemical species by the number of you know, protons. And so different isotopic nuclei have different neutron numbers. They have different numbers of neutrons. If they had different proton numbers, they wouldn't be isotopes. They'd be whole different chemicals. For some nuclei, the nucleon number can be less than the proton number. Well, that's not correct. Um, you might notice whenever you look at a nuclide symbol that the top number is always larger than the bottom number. And that's because it includes all of these protons, right? Because protons are nucleons. It's all the nucleons, the neutrons plus protons. And so for some nucleons, the nucleon number can be less than the proton number. Um, no, nah, it just doesn't even make sense. Protons are nucleons, and so how could the nucleon number be, be less than that? It says, in some nuclear processes, mass energy is not conserved. 
which statement about nuclei is correct? In some nuclear processes, mass energy is not conserved. Well, as far as we know, <laughs> that's not true. Um, but I don't think we've... Uh, maybe there's nuclear processes that remain undiscovered where we'll find some violation of conservation of mass energy, you know. <clears throat> but I think we always are looking for the best answer here, and so I don't want to confuse you. Let's, let's just eliminate C as uh, an incorrect choice here and say that nuclear numbers of nuclei are, are unchanged by the emission of beta particles. And that's what we really talked about here, and this, this zero here is kind of the um, reinforcement of that idea. The nucleon numbers of nuclei, so like this thorium um, atom that we have here, are unchanged, right? And so when this thorium-234 became protactinium-234, it still had 234 nucleons. All we did was swap one of these uh, neutrons for a proton. But remember, this number includes all the protons and neutrons, and so the total nucleon number didn't change, but the proton number did and we kicked out this electron, this beta minus particle. So here, choice D is correct. I'll update the video if in the future we do indeed discover some nuclear process where mass energy is not conserved. That would be big news.